good afternoon. Uh, I would like to thank very much to Pan International Women Writers Committee for this uh, invitation. It's such an honor to talk uh, on the Women's Day, also my birthday, <laughs> March 8, but also it's a huge responsibility. Uh, I feel the, it's almost as heavy as a cross on my shoulders to speak as a writer to writers um, in a world where misery and horror is so overtaking. Uh, but if, if I think honestly, I mean, was there ever, has there ever been a time uh, or there ha has there ever been a break in this continuity of misery? Uh, has there ever been a human story which couldn't be uh, written as a tragedy? I do believe that the human story probably started with this feeling of destiny, this realization of uh, a mistake somewhere, some, at some junction, a, road, a mistaken road, a small but irreversible mistake, a very human mistake. And that's, uh, we later on perhaps defined our beginning as word. The first word was said, the sky separated from the earth, and a god inside us killed his brother god. And maybe since then we are trying to recreate them ourselves from this marriage of the blood and the words. Well, what good is literature in such a world where people are, millions of people are, waking up to a day with a one single expectation to survive. Uh, it's a question I ask myself several times and answered in numerous ways. How can literature change the world? And of course, there is no answer, only momentary answers to that question. Uh, in my darkest days, it's a relatively small ordeal, but it was perhaps the biggest for me, the police custody. Uh, I, uh, I was always with this question, what can literature do now? Uh, and I remembered and quoted lines of Paul Celan. Uh, I remembered paragraphs from Borowski and Jorge Semprun, Dostoevsky's memories. Uh, but the most I had to confront my own writing, uh, the stone building and other uh, places, as it in the English translation, which is, the book is entirely set to a police station. Uh, it's a metaphor of torture and trauma and madness. And the two main protagonists of the book is an angel and a an madman. Both have faces scarred. Uh, to, into, into a scar divides their faces into two unequal parts. And an angel that comes from the skies falls among the humans, his hands full of presents, uh, almost forgotten what he's been looking for in, the, in our night, uh, and dies in a little torture cell. And when I myself was under custody, I said, will I ever be so naive again to believe or to create or to dream of an angel? And in my third night in the custody, one of my prison mates uh, cut her wrists and I got an idea of the angel that at least one gets a feeling of the angel when one totally realizes its lack, its absence, his absence or her absence. And from passing through that absence, one can arrive maybe at the angel. A week later, I was in another cell, in a bigger one, in a prison. 
And this time, not only literature, but real human voices were accompanying my isolation. Voices of other prisoners, female prisoners. And I do, I do believe and I did learn in prison that women have a natural tendency or <laughs> a talent for empathy, which is so much lacking in our world, and solidarity. And it was their solidarity that kept me kept this lonely prisoner who was not given food or water alive. Uh, my first friend, let me put it this way, my first prisoner friend, uh, sent me a sandwich and water. She taught me how to smuggle. Uh, two years ago, my first prison friend committed suicide in an isolation cell. And now I think the only place where I can meet her uh, is, is her story. If I can possibly one day tell her story the way it deserves to be told. And in this little cell, maybe the angel will find me once more, once again. So I have always believed that literature can be, should be, the voice of the victim, even the scream of the victim, who has been silenced long ago. And I do believe that our world will be even more devoid of meaning without that voice that it has been already lost, maybe. And, that's, and I owe to simple human stories sometimes to get my belief back in literature to remind me that in literature as a means of resurrection and resistance. I just like to finish with three sentences. Literature as a mirror has long been shattered, but some of us still keep on groping among the broken glass, wandering through the dreams of a mirror perhaps that has long turned into sand. For a grain of truth, only a bleeding hand can grasp. But the miracle of the word is eternal, and it lies in the fact that it forever remains incomplete. And I think this is the only resurrection possible. Thank you very much. <laughs>